So down here in Wexico, the summer is far from over. Wexford are hurling well on into the season. Uh, unfortunately for our Carrigate 50 lecture series, we're coming to the last one. But it's one that we've all been looking forward to. Michael Potterton is going to be in the library talking about castles. I grew up in Trim in County Meath and uh, so in the sort of shadow of the castle and that I think I had to, there was something romantic about it and I thought maybe, maybe that's for me. Who built it, you know, what's yeah. the background to that yeah. uh, and who would have thought it? Here I am 90 years later uh, or whatever it is. <laughs> so it's no wonder Michael growing up in the shadow of a castle that he was going to come down here to us in Wexford one day and give this talk on the Norman castles. I'm Michael Potterton. Uh, I'm from Maynooth University. I work in the history department there. Um, actually an archaeologist, not a real historian at all. I'm a tame archaeologist in the history department. So, Michael Potterton, our expert on castles. It's time for me to get out my list of hard questions and put them to the test. So, the first thing to ask Michael, were the Anglo-Normans the first to start building castles in Ireland? People would believe that it was the Anglo-Normans who introduced castles to Ireland. And there's a lot to be said for that theory, but increasingly we have evidence that the Gaelic-Irish were building castles uh, in the 12th century, but before the coming of the Anglo-Normans. New vocabulary starts to turn up in the Irish annals. Uh, new uh, ideas are coming in from overseas. And of course, the Irish kings and others were traveling overseas on pilgrimage and for various other reasons, bringing back ideas of things that they'd seen overseas. Uh, so it would seem that uh, the first castles that were built here uh, were probably in the early part of the 12th century and interestingly before the coming of the Anglo-Normans. That was a surprise to me to know that we were already building castles here before the Anglo-Normans arrived. So I had to ask Michael, what's the evidence he's got to show us that the Irish were building castles before the Anglo-Normans got here? So we start to get words like, uh, well, we, you know perhaps in Irish the word cashlon, the Irish word for a castle. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist in the Irish language before the 12th century. So that is not a very strong piece of evidence on its own, but when stacked up with the other archaeological and documentary evidence, we start to get an inkling of the fact that they were starting to build not ring forts, not crown oaks, but different types mm -hmm. of monuments. There were probably not perhaps what we would think of immediately as a castle, not the Disney-type castle, not, not even a stone castle perhaps, uh, but something like that that they were getting ideas from overseas. What we've learned then is that once the Anglo-Normans arrived, that's when castle building really ramped up. This was how they dominated the landscape. Consequently, I got to talking to Michael about the effects it had on the landscape and on society in general. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's difficult to, uh, to you know, difficult to answer those questions in, in any sort of detail. We don't really know the answers to that, but it certainly had an impact on the landscape, and especially when the first big stone castles began to be constructed, the likes of Maynooth Castle or Trim Castle or Kilkenny or uh, Carrick Fergus, for instance, those enormous stone stu structures, the like of which there would never have been in Ireland before this. So some people in Ireland who hadn't travelled overseas, who hadn't been on pilgrimage or hadn't been merchants crossing the seas before that, would have never seen anything like this. And of course that would have had an impact on their psyche. Yeah. The Anglo-Normans were constructing these enormous castles, partly for defensive reasons, but partly to demonstrate their presence, their arrival on the scene. And so they often chose places that had already been inhabited, uh, that were already settlement sites. Mm -hmm partly because they wanted, again, to, to demonstrate physically we're here now and we're in charge, but also because those places were tried and tested places. They were strategic locations. They were places where markets or churches, ecclesiastical sites have been. They were crossing places on rivers. They were important sites that are still, to this very day, um, places where people congregate, either for religion or for trade and commerce, um, or for other reasons like education and healthcare. So these were focal points in the landscape, perhaps even from prehistoric times, that the early medieval Irish, the Vikings, and the Anglo-Normans after them just yeah. used again and again. Yeah. So the castles are going up and we know, because Hollywood tells us, that living in castles is an absolute fairy tale. But was it really a fairy tale for these Norman knights? The stories and fairy tales that we all grew up reading and hearing uh, have, have added to this as well. Yeah. Princesses in the tower and uh, kings with untold wealth and so on. That's uh, one side and a very few people. The, the retinue, the people working in the castle, they didn't have quite such a nice life. And you're, you're completely right. It was cold, you know, there's water pouring down the walls inside uh, many of these buildings. Uh, they're breezy and drafty. Uh, conditions were not great. Life expectancy is probably in, the, in your 30s, whether you're a man or a woman. Um, you know, so, you know, we need to be careful, some of us. Uh, some of us have already navigated our, our 30s. But, you know, in the Middle Ages, um, uh, things were pretty tough for many people.
Only a short chat with Michael Potterton and I learned so much. I'm really looking forward to catching up with him in Wexford Library, 7 p.m. on Thursday, the 18th of July. See you there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. to it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Thanks yeah. for chatting to us. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, thanks. Michael. Great. Cool. Sure.